tour in the north. Yesterday I was in Ontario, Canada, assisting a landowner with 100 acres. Today I'm in Maine. This property has quite a bit of terrain looking at the map. Of course, we've studied the map and it really is important to get on the ground, kick some dirt up, look at the trees, see what the habitat really looks like at ground level, and then start working towards those habitat improvement projects. And so when I get to the property today, first thing we're gonna do is just sit down and, and really dive into this landowner's goals and objectives, because they're gonna be different. And then we'll start touring the property and kind of putting all those pieces together for an overall plan that helps him reach his mission. Here in Maine with Liam, Liam has 300 acres here and it was timber land and he purchased it right after a pretty recent harvest a couple years ago. And as you can see behind us, there's a bunch of stumps, but it is thick. There are a lot of stems. This land was kind of used and abused and then the loggers moved on, not knocking them, they're making an income. But for Liam, working on the habitat or the hunting side, this is a challenging project. One of the first things Liam asked me was like, how do you how do you see through here? How do you hunt this? And with all these stems, it, it's really tough. And Liam is a bow hunter, but also has some buddies that firearm hunts. And given your location where you live and your time and everything, we've we've talked about all his goals. And what really seems to fit his his plan is to create some shooting lanes through here that yep. you can look down this mountain and cover some, cover a lot of acres and almost look through this cover yep. that it is right now because this is covered. It's, it's not quality habitat cover, if you will, but so few hunters are coming in here. You can't see very far. It's, it's not very effective that critters like coming in here because they, they can get away from, from hunters. So being able to see right down the middle of it, it's almost like looking straight into the, the bedroom, if you will, yep. and can be very effective. So Liam, if you don't care, just kind of tell us what you're seeing as, as you've um, kind of started working on this property here the past couple of years and what you've seen and kind of your overall goals and what you want to see in the future. Um, started out, there was pretty much no deer to begin with. and. Um, from there, it's put food plots in two years into owning it and planted them for four years now. It's been a big improvement on what we started with. So You're seeing more good. deer. Yep. He's he started a food plot program. He's starting to see more deer. The the old saying, you don't have to be faster than your the bear, but faster than your buddy. There's no one really doing a lot of food plots in the area, right, yep. Liam? We're about the only one. So having some quality food during hunting season has really improved all the habitat. Your yep. habitat right now and you're hunting. Yep. You have a lot of moose in the area, which we're, <laughs> you're saying are, Never is a big issue. competitor for your food plot forage. Yep. This is tough habitat to see deer in. So we need sunlight to the ground, whether that's a shooting lane or a food plot or habitat, more sunlight to the ground not only makes better food, but it also makes it easier for hunters to see critters. We're, uh, we're on shooting lanes right now, and then we'll go down. You've got some areas that are flatter yep. where we can make it, may be able to get some more acres of food yep. and really pack in some high quality forage. Liam and I are down at one of his food plots and he created this a couple years ago and has done a really good job trying to get some acres of quality food, but Part of that process was a disc and we picked up the soil and there is no soil structure. Yep. And you can tell it's bare, it's white, it's there's it's just like sand almost, dust. I pick it up and let it go. Now you said you had some snow just a couple of days ago, right? Yep. Yep. All that moisture from the snow is gone. Yep. It's just evaporating. That sun is just baking the soil right here. And in fact, I'm not throwing Liam on a bus, but he had he has a disc on the back of his trailer 
that he brought down to the farm and he just asked me, he said, should I return that? And I said, yes, you should. Because <laughs> he's gonna need a no-till drill, folks. Because we're gonna turn this soil around. We're gonna improve it. We're gonna get rid of the disc. You're out of the disc in business. For how? But we're gonna improve the soil. And I, I grabbed a couple handfuls and it just fell through my fingers. We smelled it. What did it smell like, Liam? Sand. <laughs> it smelled like sand. It didn't smell like soil. There was no life here. And we looked down through here and there's erosion coming off, off your plot. That's taking soil back down out of the plot, taking nutrients, whatever nutrients are here, out of the plot. Yeah. This is a great learning opportunity of, of how we can improve this soil. And Liam's going to enjoy this process much better because you're going to grow better food plots yep. and have better hunts here by improving the soil and improving his food plot uh, process. He's got the redneck back behind him in a great little pinch point. I know Liam's a hunter because he's got it on that correct side because your predominant wind is blowing back this way so he can overlook this whole food plot. From what I've seen, we can really improve your hunting property. Definitely. Man, they hammered this. They removed all the food. So this, I mean, right now, there's absolutely no food out here. Yep. You need more acres of food because what we were talking about earlier is for, for your herd to express their full potential, you need to have more food than they can consume. Yep. We never, we never want to have this table clean like this. Yep. And I know, I know the moose are a big problem here for you. I mean, there's a lot of moose sign out here, folks. Um, so they're, they're consuming a lot of forage as well. So we definitely need to add some acres because we know that's, that's a problem as well. Yep. This is so cool. Uh, it was almost like Liam planned this. I, I think he knew we were coming and he, he set this up perfectly for us. The last plot we were just at, he planted in straight brassicas. So a monoculture of brassicas and it was bare. Moose, deer came in, wiped it out. Now behind us, look at this green. This is a monoculture of winter wheat. The wheat has gotten past a palatable stage for deer. There's some browse out here, but it's not quite as palatable and it's growing. We have a lot more roots and a lot more protected soil here than we did in that other plot of just straight brassicas. And that's why it's so important to have a blend of species that have that are palatable at different times of the year. So you don't just deer, moose, whatever, whatever's eating your food plots, don't just wipe it out and then you have bare soil. So if we had brassicas and winter wheat and we add even more to your blends in the fall, yep. now we're keeping the soil covered, we have food throughout the entire season, and then come spring, like right now, we have green protecting our soil for our next crop. Yep. We're gonna pull out one of these wheat clumps here, and look at that. We were dry, it was in our hand falling apart, dust where you were brassicas because that soil wasn't being protected but here where we have roots in the soil that soil is holding together and holding moisture from that recent snow you smell that does it does it smell different than the other soil much different the other soil didn't have anything it, it just smelled like sand, you said. Yep. That's what you said. Yep. And this this smells more like soil. Living plants growing. And that's another reason why we always want something growing as many months out of the year in our food plots as we can. And why we don't want to just be a monoculture of brassicas or just winter wheat. We want to have a blend. So we have the benefits of all those species working together to improve our soil and to offer more forage throughout the hunting season and the winter for critters. Growing Deer is brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's.
Also by Green Cover Food Plots, Winchester, Moultrie Mobile, Fleet Outdoor Apparel, Morel Targets, RTP Outdoors, Fourth Arrow, Scorpion Venom Archery, Case IH Tractors, Ward Laboratories, Burris Optics, National Land Realty, G5 Broadheads, Prime Bows, and Redneck Hunting Block. Liam and I have had a great day touring his property and have really enjoyed diving in, exploring, and we're kind of at the end of the tour. This is going to be a little hidey hole food plot we've marked out. We've we've designed some larger food plots that are destination plots. As yep. we talked about earlier, he needs food. He needs some acres of food, but he's also a bow hunter. And this little hidey hole sets off, I don't know, a few hundred yards from a couple larger plots and has a really good entry and exit. Yeah. So this is gonna be a great little hunting location for you to back off and slip in here in the back door and get within bow range of deer yep. that are coming and going to those larger plots. So tying everything in together right now, of course I'm gonna go back and kind of play with the map a little bit, fine tune, and then I'll be sending the, the plan back to Liam. And he's gonna, I know Liam, he's gonna get to work and gonna start on this project soon i wouldn't i wouldn't be surprised if all the plots are in and ready to go this summer ready for fall and and it will be a good hunting season for liam so super excited about this project hope to share updates with you and have really enjoyed it liam so thank you for letting yeah let me come today and tour your property thank you, thank you for the enjoyed help. it so what what are you what are your thoughts right now kind of after the tour as you kind of see in the design come together, what what are your thoughts? I'm looking forward to getting the map and putting it all together, making yeah, it happen. Yeah, yeah. Right, you've got a lot of work to do. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but it'll be fun. Yep. It'll be fun. Hey, I hope you're able to get outside this week and enjoy creation. But no matter what, make sure you slow down and listen to what the creator is saying to you. Thanks for watching Growing Deer.